We hot, we live. What's up everybody? Welcome to Live Talk Tuesday. It is February 4th and we are here on location in North Carolina with my man Tony Gibson. As you can see, uh, T-Fish is not with me tonight. Uh, Y'all are probably like, damn, T-Fish got a little bit older yeah. overnight. <laughs> it swole up a little bit like a tick. <laughs> Tyler couldn't make it on this trip, but uh, he's back home and uh, he's editing and putting some shows together for us. But man, we had to come down here and see my man Tony and Miss Beth, his wife, and we went over to the shop today and we had some really cool times over there, you know, looking around. We've been there before, but it's so awesome to go there and see it all. Yeah. So, it seems like each time you guys come, there's something different going on. And, yeah. And, and it's good to see the guys. And, and, and we know more and more guys every time we come, so yeah. it's good to see, it's you know, yeah. just like coming to see family. And you guys got some new trucks. You got Daytona coming up. There's a whole lot going on. I mean, yeah. it's exciting. You And, you know, for those of you that are tuning in and you may not uh, know much about NASCAR, you may not know anything about Tony, uh, Tony is uh, like a legend in NASCAR, if you will. <laughs> He's been around a long time in NASCAR, been with a lot of big teams. I'll let him tell you all about that. But I'm just telling you some stuff because I know he won't tell you. He won't say a word about it. <laughs> but uh, And actually, this, is, this was top secret up till probably till we came here, and I'm going to tell you. Uh, Tony is actually, um, like, uh, not really featured, but his life is kind of documented in a Netflix series coming up, and Kevin James is the actor that's going to be playing Tony, and his last name is Gibson in the Netflix series, uh, and, you know, the wife's name is Beth, so it just kind of, you know, it's Tony's life, and they're taking it and putting it in a Netflix series, and it's really cool because uh, if you don't know who Kevin James is, if you know like uh, the mall cop Paul Blart, yeah, King uh, of Queens, Hitch, yeah, you King know, of Queens, yeah. all that stuff. He's he's you know big time actor, and and Tony got to spend time with him. Uh, so that's all going down, and you know they got the Daytona going on here soon. So, man, you guys are busy. We are we are busy, and uh, like I said, with uh, doing the 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 Netflix deal with uh, called the crew. It'll drop in October, mm -hmm. right along our chase time. So, yeah, I was just fortunate. NASCAR reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in doing it. Yeah, and, uh, which it was an honor. Yeah. Um. So I got to meet Kevin and Jeff and all the writers and and producers in Homestead. Yeah. And um. So it kind of moved a little quicker than that, and we just spent uh, two or three days up in New York. Yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks ago with Kevin and the crew going over some of the scene, or doing some of the the sets and seeing how everything's laid out, and you know I could help them a little bit with with a few things but uh yeah yeah it was crazy to sit there and watch these guys rehearse and do some things and i'm i looked at beth and i'm said i think this is about me like <laughs> they're saying stuff that's this is my life they're talking yeah. about but I, it's a real honor it's cool yeah uh it's gonna be an awesome show he yeah. is such a funny guy kevin is is such a funny guy to, just to hang around and sit around everything he does his actions are all just incredible yeah and uh but uh, yeah, it's a uh, racing season. It starts for us, you know. Our Super Bowl yeah. is at the beginning of our season, and we just got through with the Super Bowl uh, in football. So we uh, this all starts back in uh, you know around October and November for us getting cars ready for day yeah. one. So yeah. it's such a big race for us. Um, like I said, it's it's uh, so much history uh, around this race. It's so hard to win this race. Yeah. So everybody starts early building cars and getting ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you saw today, um, things everybody's running around like ants, crazy, yeah. working on stuff. We've got to take three cars per team. Uh, it's two weeks. So um, it's the, the preparation for this race is more than we put in all the other races the rest of the year. Because yeah. it is and it's a, the first race, and you go into it blind because you really haven't done much. To this point, you've got a new driver this year. Yeah, Cole uh, Custer is, a, is yeah. a rookie driver moving up from Xfinity Series, which yeah. he drove for Stuart Haas Racing last year and did an incredible job. He's won a ton of races. And uh, so Mike Shipley, his crew chief, is moving up with him. So I think that's a great combination. Yeah. It's a good comfort feel for Cole, uh, having your crew chief that you've had for a couple of years come up with you. Um, and, you know, we have Clint Boyer, which is a veteran driver, and uh, he's been at Stuart Haas for a few years. Kevin Harvick, obviously yeah. champion. Uh ton of races won. Eric Amarola is winning mm -hmm. races. A great, talented driver. I crew chief for Eric when he first got in NASCAR. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, we got a lot of great drivers. Got good sponsors. Um, you know, our sponsors are incredible. Um, you know, Ford Motor Company uh, has been awesome. They've really, really helped us. Uh, you know, escalate our our company. Yeah. Um, and we appreciate everything done for us. And we have Bush Beer. Um, you know, Smithfield. 
uh, food products, uh, rush trucking. Yeah. Um, so we have great sponsors and we want to perform. We want to go to this race and win. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to go take Daytona and win. You know, it starts yeah. off with the pole. Yeah. Um, go down there. You want to be, be the fastest car. You know, you want to yep. pump your chest. You oh, know? yeah. Uh, sit on the Daytona 500 pole, which I've done with Danica Patrick back a few years ago. And uh, and then it's the race. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, like I said, it's it's a race like no other. Yeah. It, it is, it's like a huge chess match um all day long yeah uh, and you were you were talking earlier we talked about uh you know for people at home watching it and they don't realize behind the scenes what's going on when you're out on that track you're yeah. you're first of all manufacturers are with manufacturers yeah you know ford's yeah. with ford chevy with chevy toyota with toyota and those guys are all kind of finding their groove they're finding somebody to run with that's right and and that goes on throughout the whole day they're and Sometimes you watch a driver and you're like, man, why is he doing that? And why is he yeah. wet? why is he back there? And why is he? They're getting a feel for the track, getting a feel for the the lines for the yeah. guys that are they're going to be working with. So they're just setting up the whole race, yeah, through for all the way from the beginning. And even though it looks like they may not, because everybody thinks you need to be out front the whole time, but that's not necessarily how it works. Yeah, it's not necessarily you know. And and we all the manufacturers and it actually starts all week long. You yeah, know, even in the practice session sessions and. Uh, and like in the uh, the 125 races, the duels we have uh, on next Thursday, those are every practice session we go out, we get with our group of guys, manufacturers, we try to group up, we try to use each other and mm -hmm. try to, you know, build that confidence in a group of seven or eight or ever who's in that, however many is in that group um, throughout the whole week. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a learning period over that week that, you know, who has the fastest car and who drafts the best and mm -hmm. is you know does the four car lead better than the 10 car leads or the 14 uh and you know we have the penske group that that uh that we we practice with and we usually race around mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it comes down to who your partner is going to be because there's huge wrecks yeah so a wreck could take out your best partner and you got to switch up right? yeah. and pick another guy and it could yeah. wreck half the Fords and now I have to go with a Toyota yeah. or a Chevy. So we try to stick with that plan as long as we can, but sometimes that gets kind of tossed to the side. And So when, you know, when does it come down to the point where it's every man for themselves? Um, About five to go. About five so, to go. Uh, yeah, it, within five to go, all bets are off. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all about you and yeah. your team winning. Yeah. Um, so... It becomes partnering yourself with whoever you feel like you draft the best with. Your mm -hmm. two cars are the fastest, and whoever's leading, and that's the guy that you want to stay with, or the two guys you want to run with. Yeah. To take you to the end to the to one to go. Yeah. You can get inside one to go, then it's a matter of okay, how am I going to get around this guy? How yeah. am I going to snooker him? Okay, I'm gonna stay with him, but when I get him, I'm dumping. Where yeah. am I gonna dump this guy? And yeah. when's he gonna dump me? So it's a chess match. And, and how is all that communicated? Because I hear, you know, when you watch it on TV or we've been to races with you, it's like this spotter went over and talked to that spotter. Yeah. So are they communicating through spotters? Are they communicating through crew chiefs or the team? How do they? Because the drivers can't talk to drivers, right? No, they can't talk. Drivers can't talk to drivers. Um, you know, NASCAR put a stop to that a long yeah. time ago. So. It's mostly done with the spotters, like mm -hmm. uh, between the crew chief and, and like my spotter, I would communicate with him, uh, and then that spotter would c communicate with whoever we're wanting to run with. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, that changes. So spotters are running up and down that tower, you know, picking new buddies and here and there. And if you get, for yeah. some reason, you know, say you, you miss pit road and mm -hmm. you don't get the pit with the guys that you wanted to pit with, now that changes, right? So now your spotter's got to run, find somebody else who hasn't pitted yet and try to team up with them so you can pit together, come off pit road together and draft so you don't get left out of the draft. Yeah. So it's mainly between the crew chief talking to the spotters, the spotters talking to one another. Yeah. And they have, uh, we call it the spotters union. Yeah, yeah. So those guys up there, they're the same guys on the roof all the time. Mm -hmm. They respect one another, right? So they... they you got to stand beside this guy all year long. Yeah, so all don't year, piss yeah. Him off, right? yeah, exactly. So, right out of the gate. Yeah. yeah, so they work good together. And, yeah. and like I said, everybody knows the deal. Um, you know, inside five to go, it's pretty much every man for himself. Yeah. Uh, but that's the fun of it. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. Stricter rate rate, stricter plate racing. Yeah. That's what makes it fun, exciting for the fans is you don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. So then you were a crew chief for a long time. How many years? Uh, I crew chief. I was a crew chief for 21 years. 
And then and I've been in racing, a car chief, and been it for 34 years. Yeah. So then you uh, kind of came off the road, and now you're uh, in charge at Stuart Haas Racing? Yes, production um, manager for, so basically over all four teams. So yeah. I still um, work hand-in-hand -hand with the crew chiefs um, and the drivers Yeah. and all the teams. I make sure that they have all the cars they need, the preparation of the cars done right. I kind of manage all the other departments mm -hmm. at Stuart Haas to make yeah. sure that the cars are being built right and the things they want to implement things that the crew chief won't put in their cars. Um, so it's just, it's kind of like babysitting. Yeah, um, yeah. So I went from 35 people to 380 people. Yeah. So, um, but I, I love it. I uh, It lets me come off the road all the time, yeah. spend time with the grandkids, and yeah. do other things like side by side and all yeah. kinds of stuff that I love to do. But I still get to touch race cars every yeah. day, and uh, I still have a really good time. So, And that's something I wanted to talk about because a lot of people don't understand the grueling schedule that you have when you're on the road with race car, because I know, you know, when you guys, when you were on the road and all the rest of the guys were on the road, your schedule is nonstop from the time you start mm -hmm. till the time, the end of the season, except for like a couple weekends here and there. Yeah. And the funny thing about it is, you know, you know, the people know you have hard schedules, but they don't know. Like we were talking yesterday, like for years you would get home at midnight, 1 a.m. on Sunday, you know, Sunday night, and you'd have to be back at work Monday morning after the race. They think, oh, yeah. well, they get off Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, whatever. They get to, you know, go get ready and go head back to track. Yeah. That's not the case. No, it's not. It's uh, it's seven days a week. Yeah. Um, and it's long hours. You know, it's yeah. 12, 13 hours a day. Um, and especially crew chiefing, you know, it's you, you have to be at the shop all the time. We would try to take like maybe a half a day off on Thursday, which is our fly out day. Yeah, yeah. So you would try to take the morning off to do whatever you needed to do. Yeah. Um, but you were up on a plane about two o'clock. So yeah. very limited time away from the shop and, and um to spend with your family. So, you know, having a you know, having a great wife like mine, Beth, um, put up with me for all these years. We've been married twenty eight years, so mm -hmm. she uh she's put up with me being gone and yeah. raised my daughter Laney by herself pretty much. Yeah. So uh yeah, it's grueling. It's uh, yeah, a lot yeah, of people don't realize it's not everything that that it looks like. It's a lot of intense work. Yeah. Uh, a lot of hours, blood, sweat and tears and um but you have to love it. It's like yeah. anything else we do. It's just like your profession, right? You have to love it and you yeah. put a lot of time in it and a lot of people probably don't realize what all you do, right? Yeah. Like you're you're all the time going and, and meeting people and writing and, and trying to share your story mm -hmm. uh, to the American people mm -hmm. and um, so they can go out and have fun. Right? Exactly. You, you're yep. going out doing the legwork of what are some of the best spaces to go and ride and do these things and so you can share it to them yeah. so they don't make a mistake and, and go to somewhere the wrong place somewhere sucks, yeah. or, or if they have a family and it's too treacherous, you yeah. want to let them yeah. know these things. So yeah. it's no different. You, you guys are working just as hard as anybody else yeah. and uh, you know, everybody out there that's working in American public, they all have jobs and they all miss their families. There's time that they can't spend at home. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's just it's just another job. Yeah, and that's how we met was through off-roading. And, yeah. you know, honestly, some of the best friends, some of the best people in the world that we have, that we know, that we hang out with, that we go riding with, we met through the off-road world. And, uh, you know, with you guys, even with your schedules, as crazy as they were, you would have off, you know, a couple weekends a year, but you would go riding together. You know, yeah. To, yeah, and we'd all go riding together. It'd yeah. be 30, 40 of us, yeah. and we'd all go riding together. And it was just that release. And the one thing that I found uh, really kind of, you know, almost kind of inspiring is when you guys are all together, and, and I mean different drivers, different crew chiefs, different teams, we're all together with all these different people yeah. in the same sport. Yeah. And not once did anybody talk about racing. No. Not once did anybody talk about NASCAR. No. Nothing. It was like we were there to have fun. Yes. And, and y'all were cutting up and having a good time. And we were cutting up. And, and you know, it was all about hanging out and riding together. Yeah. And uh, I think that's cool how you guys, you get a couple weekends off. Man, you're going. You're going riding. And, you know, from your side of it, being so busy at the track and all the just chaos is is that why you guys just went riding just to release? Is that your we main did? Thing? I, I've always loved four wheeling. Yeah, um, I've had dirt bikes and four wheelers, and I used to watch your show back when it first came on. I yeah. told you before. I, when yeah, I you yeah, first, first time, I met like, you, you were like, I know who you I'm are, like, dude. Right? I've watched your show. Yeah. My wife would get frustrated because I would watch all those shows and I would stay up and 
yeah. and uh, to live in and watch your shows for years because yeah. I loved it. Like I learned so much from your show back in the day and about machines and I know you would go and test ride different machines in different places and that's how I educated myself on you know the the side by side and the four wheeling was watching your show yeah so uh, and it inspired me to go out and do it and have fun and next thing you know there's you know there's 40 50 people in yeah. the racing industry here that we do it from different teams like you say we'll get together and go side by side yeah but and it's just something that we love and it's it's uh you know we can go out and breathe fresh air and Go play in the mud, or go to the mountains, or wherever we decide to go and ride. And yeah. At night we have bonfires, and, and we yeah. all cook out. Everybody eats together, and it's just a it's a family it's a family sport to yeah. us. It's not really a sport, but it's it's our way of releasing. Yeah. Um, and and spending time with one another, and that people have asked us a million times, man, you guys race together every week. Mm -hmm. But now you go on vacation together. That's just not right. Well, yeah, it is because we have the same passion for yeah. for four wheeling, you yeah, know, side by side. And so when we do it, we want to all go and do it, and enjoy it together. So and and that's cool because I've seen that at races that like uh, the one time we were at Bristol and it kept raining and we kept getting rain delays and you know it was kind of like over and over. Okay, two three laps stop. And, yeah. And then after a while, like all these other guys from all the other crews started coming over to your hauler and they're in there getting drinks and snacks and all yeah. these and I'm like, damn, is this legal? Yeah. Because I'm like, y'all are on, all totally like you're, you're waiting out for the there fight to break out. Rubbing fenders yeah. and they're coming up, hey man, how's the kids? You coming yeah. over for a cookout? You yeah. know, and I'm like, man, this is crazy. Y'all just out there rubbing fenders and like going at yeah. it. Now you're in here just hanging out having snacks and drinks in the same hauler. Yeah, well but, like like I said, we 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 spend more time together on the road with yeah. them than we did our families. Yeah. So we are one big family. Yeah. Right? And it's, uh, and we, and you know, we, we enjoy going and meeting new people when we go side by side and, and, and we've met more friends and people and brought them to the racetrack. Yeah. We, we, you know, just like you guys, right? We met and at, I think it was Durham town. We first yeah, met Durham down town, there. Yeah. And, um, ever since then, we have been great friends and yeah. we've gone and rode together and we've met friends through your show and your experiences and now we've become good friends with us and, yeah. and we meet them and ride with them and, and uh, so it's it's funny how it's a small world if yeah. you think about it, right? Because they, they want to see how our world works yeah. so they want to sit and talk to us about what we do but when we go, we want to go and sit and talk about what you're doing. Yeah, what do you do? Like, yeah, what do you what do you do? You yeah, know, how does this this whole deal work? Yeah, you know, we our passion is four wheeling and side by side. Yeah, talk about that. Let's, and and let's, that's how it was today. We're at the shop. Yeah. Daytona's coming up. The yeah. cars are being pushed by us. Yeah, I mean people are in like just massive like get shit done mode. Yeah, and you and me and Rodney and Miss are all standing there. Rodney's got his phone out, showing me pictures of his side by side with his new tires. Yeah. <laughs> show me this, show me that, and we're and we're talking about family. We're talking about riding. We're talking about the kids. We're talking yeah. about. Not once did we talk about Daytona coming up uh -huh. or like anything going on. It was no. it was about family and what we do and about going yeah. riding and, and talking about coming to our place and going riding. Yeah. So it that's all it is and, and like you said, that's how it works. But uh, you know, I think it's it's pretty cool how you know, one of your favorite places to go is Hatfield McCoy. I yeah, mean, by far, because you know, every time we pretty much meet up and go riding, that's pretty much the place we go. And you even have uh, your camper there, you put uh, people can rent it at West yeah, Virginia. Yeah, I have Ritz. my toy hauler. I actually ended up moving up there to uh, West Virginia ATV TV rentals, and um, so I rent it out when I'm not there, and then yeah. when I go, I stay in it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I used to take my motorhome up there, and um, and I've rented cabins at, at Ashland. So uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a place I love to go, and we try to go there two, three, maybe four times a year, depending yeah. on my schedule. Um, but I love it up there. It's, yeah. uh, to me, it's, the air is different. Um, it's just being out in, in, in the hills and the mountains and, you know, you'll see bear, you'll see deer, you'll see turkey. And yeah. we meet some of the best people while we're out yeah. doing that kind of stuff. We'll meet friends and they find out we're in racing and, but once they find out we're in racing, we don't want to talk about that, right? Nope, so we're, nope. we're, we'll ask them, let's talk about what you guys yeah. do. How, where do you like to ride? Yeah. What kind of machine you got, right? We'll yeah. spend more time standing around looking at machines and this, that, and the other. And and we learn from 
the average person that goes out and rides yeah. side by sides, we learn more from them than, than anybody. Oh, I know that. I, every time we go out, somebody breaks down, something breaks, <laughs> whatever. You whip out all these tools. Yeah. I mean, that one time I was like, I know Gibson got a barbecue chicken leg. I got the, one, yeah. In a bag. Because yeah. you got every. You're like, yeah, you know what? I learned this from your show. That's take this, I, take that, hey, take. Well, that's yeah. right. I, I did. And I, I, like I said, you can ask Beth, I, w I would religiously watch your show and. I would prepare. I'd watch something and I would write it down. I would learn something about it. Yeah. Whether it was tire prep or worn wrench winches or whatever it happened to be, I would learn. I'd write it down. Next thing I knew, it was going in my side by side. Right. Yeah. So I try to learn, and then you know, as I go along, I I adapt a lot of my racing knowledge into my side by side. Yep. Right. Like yep. lock tighten bolts and safety checking my stuff every week. Yeah. You know, every time I go ride, I come home. I put it up on jack stands. I took, pull the floorboard out of it or the, the underboard out yeah. of it. Take all my wheels and tires off. I strip it down. I clean it, check yeah. everything. Um, I nut and bolt it. Yeah. Um, I lock tight everything. I put everything back. And I, I treat it like a race car. Yeah, yeah. So I know it, it's probably maybe overkill. But at the end of the day, when you go ride, I want to go ride and know that my machine is prepped right, yep. right? I've gone over it. I've looked at it. I don't want to have a failure because something yeah. I forgot. Yeah. And well, it sucks when you go ride with someone and their shit breaks every time you go. Yeah. Every time. Every and time. There were a while we had a couple people. I was like, man, don't, please don't tell me they're coming I know. Because every we, time. We like, did. And, and you know, we, we would try to educate them and, <laughs> and tell them, hey, man, you know, that, that it's, it's, it's easy steps and you'll save yourself a lot of heartache yeah. if you'll just do these few steps. Yeah. Um, but, but I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool how you can take, you know, NASCAR racing and, and just racing in general that we do and apply it to something we love like side by side. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to learn on both sides. Oh yeah, and, for sure. Uh, so, and we learned like, you know, we, we, uh, we started rebuilding our own shocks and everything. So we were dying them at the shop. I yeah. changed the oil, I vacuumed the oil. So we were doing things on the side by side that yeah. I was doing on a race car, you know, yeah. making my ride better, having to do this and a uh, quick couple of steering wheels and stuff like that. So it's, I'm uh, surprised Stuart don't have y'all building side by sides on well, the side in the shop. Well, yeah. So you say that, but you know, Stuart, you've been around when yeah. Stuart's raced with oh, us. Yeah. So he breaks a lot of yeah, stuff exactly. and uh, you can give him the toughest machine in the world and he's going to break it. That's but why he brings three or four with him. That's exactly right. He'll bring three or four and we usually work on them all the time we're there but because he's wide open. Yeah. He is on the pin all the time. But he loves it too, yeah. right? So you're talking to a guy, Tony Stewart, right? Just inducted in the Hall of Fame. NASCAR loves side by sides, right? He's yeah. got three of them. He's got a trailer that hauls it. He loves that stuff. Yeah. He loves to go camping. You guys have been there with us. Right? Oh, yeah. He likes sitting around a fire. He likes, yeah. He doesn't talk about racing. Like nope. We talk about friends and yep. how we're going to, you know, what are we going to do next year? Or the next time we come for Thanksgiving or the next time we do this, what are we going to do different? Yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, a guy like that, if he can enjoy some of the things that just us common folk enjoy i think that tells you what kind of person he is right yeah. and how yeah. good of a how good of a a sport or however you want to say it that side by side is right yeah. it, it makes family side yeah. by side make it makes families oh yeah um and our family continues to grow and um you know there's a lot of other race cars brad kozlowski um he is a huge side by side Oh yeah, uh, I know. Paul I'll... Wolf, all those guys, right? So we go riding with those guys, yeah. and you would never think, yeah, race car drivers want to go drive side by sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, because it's something that they are passionate about, and it's so much fun to do. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know that one time we all went. Kislowski was rolled an X three up on its side, and yeah. you know they're winching it back over. That's right. And, yeah. I mean, it. You know, you just never know what you're going to see or who you're going to see out on the that's, trail. That's exactly right. Yeah. Did you have any questions, Miss? You were. Yeah, I do. I do. Jacob Blitz. He says, "Do NASCAR teams have to pay an entry fee to be entered to race?" Yes, we do. Yep. Yeah. It's actually fifty two hundred bucks per car, each race. Wow. Each event. Wow. I wow. Didn't know that. Yes. Huh. Uh, Jesse Robinson, uh, are you going to get a new Razor Pro? <laughs> I don't know what side by side you have, and some people know you have a razor. I have two razors, so they're the 1000 turbos, um, 2016s. They're just well, one's orange, one's red. Uh, I put roll cage on on both of them. I'm all about safety, so I put the five part or Simpson uh, racing products who make our belts for our race cars. 
he made belts for our side by side. So he custom made belts for all of our, at the shop, all of our racing buddies. Um, so we wear full face helmets, uh, Simpson helmets, bell helmets, whatever you prefer. Um, full you got shields. PRP seats. PRP seats. Yeah. And all my razors, all of our guys, that's what they run. Um, I know Scott, my buddy out there, he, he has hooked us up and their seats are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, I love them. Got those in every machine. Um, we put um, the rugged radio systems yeah. so we can talk back and forth, yeah. which makes it really super nice. We just don't give the women the push to talk button. <laughs> they, the, women, the women only get to listen, and that's a Tony Stewart rule. Only Tony Stewart's along. Because when we awesome. first started doing this, and so the, then this all came about because Tony Stewart would just take off. Yeah. And he would get lost. Yeah. Right? So we're figuring out, all right, how are we going to fix this? So. Stuart bought all these radios for everybody, mm -hmm. right? They're like a grand a piece. Yeah. So made everybody put these radios in their machines. And he said, but there's only one stipulation. And we're all like, what's that? He says, the women can't talk. Oh, they can listen, oh, oh. but no push to talk but yeah. for the women. Yeah. So I let him address the women on yeah, that. Yeah. I was cool either way. But um, that today is still the standard. Yeah. Well, um, I know the first time we all went riding, Stuart wasn't with us that time, and Miss and Bree both had push to talk buttons. Yeah. And you guys were like, what is that? Yeah. We there's have, a woman, there's on, this a woman on this radio. woman on this When that Miss and Bree just lit oh, you guys off, they just yeah. dove right in. They didn't miss a beat. Oh, it was like, <laughs> there, it was like two dudes on the radio. Like, oh, they were yeah. just at you guys. Okay, yeah. but now say, tell everybody what Rodney said today. Oh, well, that is true. We were talking to Rodney today. Rodney Childers, and uh, he said, you know, he said, I really miss the ladies going along riding yeah, with us. Because yeah. lately, it's just been all the guys. That's because yeah. we cook. No, no, no. He said he misses having conversations right. with I his mean, wife. Well, you do. And like, I, In the side-by-side, -side, going you, down a trail. You, you do. Yeah. Yeah. You miss. We, like I said, with the radio systems, we can, we can they're voice activated, right? Yeah. So we can talk back and forth. And, and it's fun to have somebody beside you, mm -hmm. and, you know, looking and enjoying everything. And being able to talk and it's 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 a lot of fun and whoever's in the front you know usually sees the deer or the bear first yeah, or whatever yeah. or they can stop and this but you know the the only thing the women kind of do is they have to pee a lot oh yeah they gotta pee a lot so yeah. we go just a short distance i gotta pee yep now we gotta unbuckle do all the stuff get yeah. out gotta and I, I noticed one thing when your wife miss beth goes along we can't talk too much because she's listening to her to favorite Chris yes. Stapleton song or something like That's that. That's right. She's exactly. like, I'm listening to my song. Y'all shut up That's, now. Y'all yeah. hush. <laughs> I'm yes. like, what the heck? Yeah. That's just for Jay. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so Jay Gunnery, he rides with us a lot. So, you know, yeah. Jay's vocal. He's a, he's a, oh, nice he's, a he's an agitator, man. He's an He'll agitator. He likes to talk. He likes to do those things. And Beth likes to listen to her radio and yeah. her tunes and look around and so it gets uh, it gets a little sketch from not dicey, time. but it, you know what though? I would have to say when we started riding with you guys and we started using the rugged radios, it took the experience from here, like to here. It like ten x our experience because we could all talk, yeah. and it was so much more fun. And, it, it is and, a lot of fun. If something's going wrong or yeah. something's happening. Like, hey, there's a log sticking out on the right side, yeah. you know, and you're coming up. Oh, yeah, there it is. You might not have seen it. Or, right. or a washout or, yeah. or things like that or just somebody coming the other way or, you know, is it all clear? You know, it's, and, and, of course, the razzing, you know, just talking and just razzing is like one of the it, best it's, parts. It's fun. But it is it is having the radios is, is super cool. Somebody has a problem, breaks down, you know, you can communicate. Yeah. Everybody can stop. Yeah. Nobody's going to get lost, right? So it's it's easy to stay in contact with everybody. And like I said, if you if if you see something, you want to say, "Hey, man, there's a waterfall up around the corner. We're all going to stop, get off, take pictures, do whatever." Yeah. Then we get it's it's just communication is key. Yeah. I mean, hand signals are great. I know me and you have been on a couple trips, and we're coming head on with people, and they don't know that they don't do the no. old zero no. one two three. They four, don't know five. that. Yeah. They have no clue, right? So yeah. And I know that you know you've had a show on this. Yeah. Um. So the radios help as far as whoever's leading yeah. can warn everybody else, hey, we got two more side-by-sides coming at us. Yeah. Three more side-by-sides or two people on four-wheelers, dirt bikes or whatever. So yeah. on the safety side of things, I think it helps. And, <clears throat> and also, the one time your tire 
busted off the back here <coughs> side by side, went down yeah. the mountain, and we came across the radio. Hey, Gibson, your tire is yeah. going down the mountain. Yeah, and I said, I'm not going to go get it. You go get it. You he's like, it. yeah, he's like, I'm not going to get <clears> it. Yeah. He said, you can let that thing down there. Yeah, yeah. if you want it, go get it. And Who was did. it? Me and Busher went You and Chris Busher, yeah, another race there. car driver. That, that was a long this. way down there. And that was a long way, but you guys did a nice job. <laughs> yeah. You bought that big 32-inch <laughs> Sedona tire back up to me and handed it to me, and I was, I was great, grateful yeah. for it. Yeah, but it was funny. The mount broke. That, that that your spare tire was on, yeah. And man, that thing just went down the mountain. I'm I telling almost you, took that kid out of that four wheeler. You did. You, it went right by this kid <laughs> on a four wheeler. He was in our group. I was like, holy <clears> heck! <throat> it almost took him out. Yeah, it was scary. We didn't laugh till afterwards, but no, no. After it was all over, it was pretty funny. But but uh, yeah. So I mean, the whole riding thing, and is, is that uh, are you planning on? getting another side-by-side -side or upgrading or just riding what you got for a while because well, you got a lot of money in years. We do. We, I mean, I've got a lot of time and a lot of money, and um, I just put Sedona tires on uh, Rockabilly online mm -hmm. and love them. I yeah. was at West Virginia um, back at Thanksgiving for a yeah. few days, and, man, them things are awesome. So I, 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 I try to I take care of them, and like I said, it's not like I beat them up bad. Um, we get to go three or four times a year, so... I don't put a ton of miles on them. Yeah. And when I come home, like I said, I strip them, clean them, wax them. They look brand new. So uh, I don't think Miss Beth's going to let me buy any new ones. Yeah, probably not. No. We got to get, you realize we got two grandkids right now mm -hmm. and another one coming. <laughs> so when when you're talking grandkids, yeah. it's all about them now. Oh, yeah. It's not about TG anymore. It's all about them grandbabies. As soon as she's going to make you get two four-seaters. Yeah, that's you exactly out right. there like <clears throat> That's exactly Gibson's right. limo service. But we do want to... I know we've been talking about coming to your yeah. place and riding, and it sounds like an awesome place. I didn't get to come last year because I had to sub in for Rodney when yep. he got thrown out. But, yeah. Um, you know, we're looking forward to coming to your place and ride. It sounds like beautiful. I've seen some pictures of it, and yeah. I know... You guys are trying to get that deal up and running. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, going good. I mean, we're doing good, good so far. It's, yeah. uh, I think once the weather breaks, spring hits, we're going to be just slammed. Yeah, it's some, already of, the, some of the pictures you guys were showing us are, are fantastic. Yeah. And so it will be so good for a family to come up and, you know, you got what, two? Two four-seaters, four seaters, yeah. Four and Rodney seaters. said the same thing. I've been wanting to take both boys. Yeah. That's and, right. But I need a four seater because right. Toby takes, you know, all the whole family along and needs a four seater. Yeah. So, I, so think, I think our next trip will probably be to your place. Yeah. And ride. Yeah. Come and, on. Um, we're looking forward to that for sure. It'll be a good time. Yeah. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, though, is you, you started out on, 80, on ATVs, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Started out on dirt bikes when I was a kid. Yeah. And then it turned into yeah. ATVs. ATVs. And then uh, we were on four wheelers. And then uh, me and Beth and Lainey, uh, my daughter, we were on four wheelers for the longest time, and we kind of got that deal started on as far as all of my racing buddies. Mm -hmm. um, we would go ride by ourselves in camp and mm -hmm. have a good time. And then another person would come. We'd tell this family, another family would come, and next thing you know, there's 40 and 50 of us, right? Yeah. And that's how it kind of went. So we, we uh, rode the four wheelers for a while, and as we got older, and the four wheelers got a little bit beat you up pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, was fortunate enough to. Uh, I, my first race that I won at Stewart Haas Racing was at Phoenix, yeah. Arizona. And uh, so Tony Stewart, for winning the first race there, he bought me a side-by-side. -side. Uh -huh. And it was an 800, Paralympus yeah. 800, right? Yeah. It's the coolest thing coming, man. It's, it's all, <laughs> yeah. right? And uh, so I rode that thing for the first time, and Beth got in there with me, and she goes, I'm done with the four-wheelers. Yeah, like that's this, it. This, this, this is way easier, more comfortable. So then we bought another one, then we bought two more, and then we would just keep any and up a little bigger, yeah. a little bigger. And uh, so we bought these in 2016, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been great machines, love them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lainey has one, hers is red. She, yep. That's the color she wanted. And then uh, mine's orange, so mm -hmm. they're twins. They look just alike, got everything exactly the same outfitted, just exactly alike. Got spare parts for all of them. I was gonna say when you when you go, your trailer is full. You got yep. the toolboxes in the front there and the nose of your trailer. You've got all the parts, everything you need. So when you go there, you're ready, you're prepared. And you know, a lot of times people go on a ride. They're like, oh, I'm just going, you know, to West Virginia. I'm going here, there, three, four, five hours away. I'm not gonna bother taking all my stuff. And then you get there and you know your stuff breaks. And then you're like, dang, I should have brought all. I my... should have brought this. Yeah. Sir. And I'll, I'm I'm the world's worst of preparing for the worst like yeah. 
if like I did survival packs and yeah. put one in Beth's car and yeah. put one in Laney's car because you never know when you're going to get stranded and you have to mm -hmm. stay overnight. So I would treat a, a, a side by side trip the same way. Yeah. Like I would prep everything in my side by side and I would take enough stuff on my side by side to where if something happened, broke down, ran out of gas, couldn't get back to camp, that I yeah. could stay overnight somewhere. Yeah. So I think that's crucial to being prepared. Yeah. It's I'd rather be over prepared than go somewhere and not be prepared. Weather cool down 40, 50 degrees, and you're out there with yeah. nothing, right? Yeah, so you're stuck. I know. Uh, I used to, I, when I first met you guys, I took tarps up there. Oh, right? yeah. I start whipping out tarps. It starts pouring rain and lightning. Mm -hmm. Well, the women, like, that's not good. No, right? no. So yeah. I started taking tarps. Yeah. And I'd put the tarps over the side sides, and the girls could stay in there on their phones yeah. and stay dry <laughs> yeah. until the storm passed, right? Yeah. So, then everybody started getting tarps and this, that, and the other, right? Yeah. So um, I try to be prepared. Uh, I try to uh, think of it like, uh, man, I may not make it home back home tonight. I may yeah. get trapped. So I think that's crucial. You got to take, you got to take, uh, you got to take those things, no matter what it is, and be prepared for yeah. the worst. Yeah. So, always prepare for the worst. And you guys, uh, what was it about a year or two ago? Uh, you guys. Didn't you rent some side by sides out west at, in some dunes and stuff? We did. And what was the difference between that and say East Coast riding Hatfield McCoy, totally which you're different. used to? Totally different. Yeah. Like riding in the sand was like wow. I, yeah. I had no idea. Um, I mean, we were running pretty fast yeah. out there because you can. It's wide open, mm -hmm. but the diff Some of it was trail riding too. The problem is the sand dictates where you yeah. go, right? Yeah. So it'll grab a four wheeler and pull the wh steering wheel out of your hand. Mm -hmm. So what you did with the throttle and what you did with your steering was you had to be way ahead of your steering. Uh, and it took us most half the day to get used to it. To learn how to drive. Uh, and then we started running the dunes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily we had a, a guy with us that knew the place and, and knew where we were going. And he knew the differences. And they called them witches' eyes. Yep. And oh, yeah, like the witches' eyes. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. And, and we would ride for three hours. And he said, now when we come back, yeah. it's not going to look like that. Yep. So you guys follow me and stay behind. And there were some we came up to before, and they were just rolling hills. We yeah. came back; it was a sixty-foot drop yep. on the other side. So, and that's the thing about the dunes with the witch's eyes. Witch's eyes is like a big old like a hole. You know, it'll just the wind will just circulate and yeah. circulate and keep keep blowing that sand out of there. Yeah. And when you come up on it, you could end up losing your whole yeah. ATV side by side, whatever. I got caught in one just because I was I was stupid. We were testing tires uh out in the dunes at dumont and it was high noon you never ride at high noon ever yep. that in the desert in the dunes that's the number one rule you ride morning you ride evening because the shadows are longer you can that's see right. yep. well i was out and they were like yeah just run them up that hill there and you know up that dune and try it and come on back man i got up and i went to swing it around and there was a big old hole big old witch's eye in there and the whole front end flipped and flipped me off and I don't care what they say about sand; it ain't soft when you hit it. No, really it's hard. Not. It knocked me out. Like yep. I, like had birds and stuff yep. flying around me. And uh, at that time, Mrs. Brother Bone was our camera guy. He come up. He's in my face. He said, "Holmes, you all right?" <laughs> I said, "Dude, where are we?" <laughs> yeah. I mean, it yeah. freaking. Did I you get number that truck that hit me? Oh my gosh! Yeah. It was a brand new, uh, tw uh, Kawasaki. Um, oh, the V Force. Yeah. Man, that thing, I trashed it. It was Dirt Wheels machine, too. Oh, I took man. it back. I was like, man, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Dude. I just trashed this thing. Yeah, bad was, mistake. They were like, ah, it's all right. But, you know, I got lucky. I got fortunate. But you got to be really careful because, you know, I know um, there's been trips we've been on where guys have gone off. Even Stuart has gone yeah, off. Yeah, that's, that's, how, he, uh, that's how he broke his back. Broke his back, yeah. Was um, He was riding, and they kind of got separated yep. a little bit. And uh, same thing, right? He went over and didn't realize the other side was... It was a 60 foot drop and he went straight down and that thing hit straight down in the dirt and yep and when it slammed back down on the back that's what messed his back up yeah you know but he uh he was very lucky I yeah mean, he uh he recuperated from it but he was very very lucky and i'll tell you one of the probably most thrilling but stupid things you'll ever do is a night ride into dunes if somebody knows where they're going yeah it is a rush. Right. I mean, it is a freaking rush. And you just look, and there's all these side by side snaking, you know, just following the line because you got to follow your lines. You got to ride on top the hill or come up over on an angle. You, you can't come up straight up over because right. that's when you get yourself in trouble. 
But man, I mean, it was really cool. We had a, a cool ride. I was out there with Yamaha doing a deal one time, and man, they were like, "You want to go on a night ride?" I was like, "Woo, man, it's kind of wicked during the day. I yeah. can't imagine." They said, "Well, we got somebody here that really knows where they're at." And right. I'll tell you what, it was really cool. It's you a whole another level. Yeah, you'd have to know that. I know uh, this year, Clint Boyer, Jeff Gordon, um, Kyle Bush, uh, Kurt Bush, a lot of those guys are. Uh, they go out to Glamis every year. Uh, Greg Biffle is into that big time. Yeah, he's got and, a shop out there and everything. Yeah, right so uh, they go out there and, and ride once or twice a year out there. Yeah. I love going out there and riding. It's beautiful. It's something different. It's totally different than, than riding West Virginia or yeah. the mud and all that kind of stuff. So you got to be prepared for it when you go out there. Have a good guide. Somebody knows the, the, the lay of the land because you get yourself in trouble quick. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> you got any more questions, Miss? Yeah, um, Matthew Giles wants to know what do you what do you use to communicate on the trail, Tony? What do you guys use to communicate? Rugged, like, rugged radios. Yeah. yeah. So everybody has that rugged radio. Yeah, we all do, and um, you know we have the push to talk buttons, so that all every machine can talk to it to each other, and then it's voice activated for your partner where you can talk back and forth, but. Like I said, it's so crucial, uh, and yeah. those radios are, are fantastic. We play our, uh, we can play our our, uh, our tunes through it from our phone. It plugs in, so we can listen to our, our radio, you know, our, our iPhones or whatever at the same time. And then when somebody talks, it shuts it off, mm -hmm. um, so all you hear is the person talking. Um, but it's the only way to go. I don't, I don't care. And even if you use the handheld stuff on four wheelers or whatever, or it's it's a must. And I've been so many times, and people get separated and get mm -hmm. lost, or somebody breaks down, and where did they, where were they at last time we saw them? And you spend more time, and you start worrying about where people are. Mm -hmm. It's worth the money to do it, invest in it. It's it's one of the biggest safety items I think that you can you can have. Mm -hmm. So it's it's crucial. And well, I don't I don't care what you're riding. Yeah, being able to communicate with one another is crucial. Yeah. So is that the same radios that they use in NASCAR? No, it's the same type of theory, um, but uh, Race Electronics is who we use, um, and they actually make some things for, uh, they make adapters and things that, that uh, we try to retrofit some different stuff and helmet stuff, but um, it's same theory, same principle, just two different companies. Gotcha, okay, that's cool. How about, um, Bobby Joe said, uh, Tony has a personal invite to the Summer Slam event up in Pennsylvania. Oh, the Summer Slam! Yeah. <laughs> I, I would love, I, yeah. I, you know, I uh, I would love to do that stuff. I, I uh, that would be my dream. Yeah, I, you know, I don't get to go to a whole lot of places, but I, I do have a little more time now that I am retired off the road to go and do those kind of kind of things. So yeah, yeah, I would love to do that. And I, I tell you something that I've I've watched for a long time, and I see it on Facebook, and I see your stuff. Is that Rally in the Pines? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I always, that's something I want to do, if at all possible. That's yeah. something I want to, that event I want to go and do and ride. Yeah. It looks like so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, but Absolutely. yeah, I would, I would love to go meet new people, see new places to ride, and, and hopefully I can do that. Yeah, and it's really cool when you go to events like... Uh, like SummerSlam or you know some of the other events and see how everybody has their stuff set up. Yeah. And I learn when I go there, I see the way they have their trucks set up, their trailers, yeah. you know, how they're towing stuff, the tires they're using, yep. their side by sides, what do they have in them? You know, there's a lot of creative things. Um, you know, Jesse Robinson, one of our uh, off-road family members, you know, he has a new Honda Talon and, you know, their a box for the back of that thing yeah. is like big money. Yeah. And he went to like Lowe's or something or Home Depot and got a box and it fits in there perfect. It looks like it was made for this thing, yeah. you know. Well, it that's, was that's what a I whole did lot for cheaper, yeah. I went to Lowe's yeah. and uh, got those big black plastic yeah. heavy duty totes yeah. and uh, they strap perfect in the back. Yep. And I got two of those that I can strap in there. Yeah. And then I take the little rubber made, rubber made containers. They're waterproof ones, and I yeah. put down inside of that. Yeah. But you, that stuff keeps it dry. Yeah. Keeps it all contained, and it's cheap. You don't yep. have to go spend the big money. You don't got to spend the big money on it. No, yeah. you can go and do it and, yeah. you know, measure it and see what you got to do, and it's fun. That stuff's yeah. fun to me. Yeah. Beth used to laugh at me all the time. I would I would always take spare socks, spare pants, clothes, gloves, and I would vacuum seal them. Yeah. She's oh, like, I know. She's I like, saw that. You saw it. She's like, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm a vacuum sealer." Yeah. First of all, I can carry more stuff yeah. because it sucks everything down and makes yep. it thin. I would take towels, anything I could think of, toboggans, anything that I could think of that we would need if we would get wet, we get muddy, 
mainly for the women, mm -hmm. is how am I going to keep them comfortable? Right? Yeah. So I'd vacuum seal a whole other set of clothes, jackets, gloves, socks, and everything, mm -hmm. and I'd pack it in that tote. Well, it doesn't get dusty, it doesn't get wet, and it takes up hardly any space because you had it. It was like yeah. paper thin, and yeah. all your stuff was just, you yeah. had it just in there. And yeah. If you would have had all that put in there, it would have took up that whole It does, trunk and, and I, I still do it now. I, I do, before I go to any trip, I'll always have my side by sides in my in my garage downstairs from where yeah. we're at right now, and I'll spend just days prepping it. Make yeah, sure I go through all my stuff, make sure I got everything I need. Um, I check everything on my side by side batteries are charged. I make sure I got flashlights, things that I think fire starter. Yeah, people say, "What are you carrying a fire starter?" Well, again, if you're yeah, trapped you somewhere, I'm going to start a fire, right? Yeah. So I get lighter knot. I put it in a plastic coke bottle, mm -hmm. and I take it with me. Mm -hmm. And if I can need to light it, I can start a fire like that. Yeah. But those are the kind of things that I enjoy prepping for. Yeah. For each trip I go, I go through all my stuff, I reorganize it, I make sure I got everything, and all my my uh, shield towels I keep. I keep one. I keep her stuff in one side in her compartment, mine in the other side, and I vacuum seal it. Yeah. And when I'm ready to use it, I take my knife, I go open it. I got clean, dry towels, and I enjoy prepping like that. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. I yeah. And that's up. I get my tablet out. I make sure everything's. Up and running. Oh, and, yeah. You know, it's, it's fun to me. And that's, yeah, that's all part of it. Like, you knowing that you have the right tools for no matter what happens. Yeah. You know, if you got a winching situation, you got an accessory kit. Yeah. You know, if whatever happens, you're prepared for it. And that's, and that's one of the coolest things going out there. And as a guy, you know, you enjoy that challenge when yeah. shit happens. Oh, I mean, I you, you, you see, everybody's me, like, oh man, I don't want to get stuck or break down. But when it happens, yeah. it's like everybody goes into like, oh yeah, Here we go. <laughs> they I start get, shaking, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> don't open your box, dude. I got this. I got this. You know, and, and I, I to do. See I love there. that. Like I, I, I take the, I take the little Bass Pro um, fishing lure yeah. containers. Yeah. And uh, that's what I put all my wrenches and my tools and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. In. Keeps them all categorized. I take safety wire and I pre cut safety wire, safety wire pliers. Mm -hmm. I think anything that could fail that I would need that I couldn't buy or carry with me, how am I going to get my machine back home? Yeah. Right? So I think about all those things too. Like, okay, I could take safety wire, I could tie this lower control arm up, I use 40 gauge safety wire, right? I got my pliers. I could tie this up. If I had to, I could take my worn winch. I could hook to the back of this guy's, pick my stuff off the ground, and that's how I'm going to tell my stuff. Yeah, out. yeah. That's the way I think. Yep. So I try to be the most prepared that I can. I take fuses with me. Anything on my machine, I can fix. Yeah, yeah. Or at and least get it back home. And even that one time when we were riding, uh, I think it was when Kozlowski was there and all those guys, uh, you had a, a rectifier regulator or something go yeah. out. And you lost your power steering. You lost all that stuff. Uh, now, yeah, you, you my, didn't have one with you, but you went back and, and Rick got one or yeah, something. My, so you changed that yeah, out. Yeah, my voltage regulator went yeah. out. So, uh, and, but that's when we, so we, I unhooked everything. And I hooked every accessory that I didn't need just to get back home. Yeah. And and I learned something from Jay, our buddy at Riseway, that He bought one of those little portable battery uh it's like a little jumper box. Yeah. And it's uh -huh. really, really small. Yeah. And uh, we used that to get it cranked back up. And oh, once okay. I got it running, yeah. we, we ran back, to, ran back to, yeah, with Rick to uh, West Virginia ATV, ATV Rentals. Yeah. And um, called ahead. The guy had my part there. We put the regulator in, and we were back and rolling the next day. That's it, man. That's what it's all about. But hey. now, guess what? What's up? When I leave now, you, guess, you, have, you have one with guess you. Guess what I carry with me now? Yeah, a voltage, voltage regulator. regulator right. Yep. <laughs> well, that one, that one rod we were on, uh, whose was it? Uh, it went out. That uh, was Trooper Greg. Trooper, the one is right. old. Oh, side by side. It was his old one. His old one, yep, yep. Because yep. you're like, yeah, he brought a spare one. I'm yeah. like, well, he's smart. He he's knows smart. It. That's exactly right. Yeah, that was the one. It was up underneath the uh, driver's it side was tire. Raining. And gets caked Remember, up and it was raining. It was raining. We were in that little valley down there, and everybody's trying to help him get it out. But I'm like, dude, he's prepped. That's good. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That was cool. I, yeah, I'm glad he had that along. I Anything think else? I'm asking about um, how Stewart House Racing is going to be uh, stacking up at Daytona. Oh. I think we'll be good. Our our uh, our speedway program has always been really solid there. Um, you don't ever know till you get down there. Um, you know, there's always little things that NASCAR changes. Our restrictor plate program hasn't really changed a whole lot over the past five years. NASCAR has kind of kept it the same. Um, but they do change little things you're not really sure about. So we go to the wind tunnel. And we do all of our background things that we need to do with our simulation program to 
be the best prepared we can when we get down there, but you really don't know that you hit the track. When you hit the track the first time, you're going to know where your raw speed is. Do I have raw speed or do I not have raw speed? So, But I feel like where we have been with Stuart Haas Racing in the past, we've always had solid cars. We're always a threat to sit on the pole or start up front. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we, we've proven we can win restricted plate races. So I feel like we're going to be really good. Um, of course, I know everybody says that, but uh, I love restricted plate racing. It's one of my favorites, but I really think that uh, we're going to be in good shape this year for sure. That's cool. Awesome. How about, um, let me see here. There was another one on here. It was really good about, I lost it because it's so many comments. Yeah, we're seeing so, that. Does Stuart Haas Racing offer tours or special behind the scene experiences at a racetrack or their shop? Do you um, well, we don't really, They we do a lot of, we have a, a, which you know, when you walk into our, the front of our lobby, we have a pretty huge display. We always have four or five cars up there and the Daytona 500 car from 2017, we won the Daytona 500. It's sitting there just like it came off back from Daytona. Um, and the whole showroom is like a huge movie theater, right? It's all glass. Um, so they can see all the assembly of the cars, the guys working on the cars, on the setup plates. Uh, it's There's not much you're gonna miss by standing in the lobby looking through the glass. It's pretty big. Um, we really don't do a whole lot of personal tours just because of the insurance reasons. Um, we just try to not get into that. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a, we do, you know, most of the time it's, we do things that's sponsor related a group of people for sponsors will come through and then we schedule certain times to do that when the guys aren't working uh just the risk right there's a lot going on there's moving parts and pieces and people so it uh it it can get hairy you've seen today yeah. right how things oh, you can, got cars moving they're moving and, and people and yeah. so we just really don't want to put people in jeopardy of getting something happen yeah. from getting hurt um so i think Stuart Haas racing done a great job of laying the shop out the way we did to where you're not going to miss anything yeah. you can see all the guys working you can see the cars that are getting ready to go to the racetrack cars getting prepped for next week race. Mm -hmm. that's all right there in front yeah, of you yeah you really can you can see a lot when you're looking right in through yeah. the front and, and our there. cnc department where all our cnc machines are it's it's all wide open right there you yeah. can see those guys in there working you can see the machines running yeah so that's really interesting too um but I, I, you know tours at the racetrack is usually that's usually led by NASCAR. Mm -hmm. um, NASCAR dictates how many people can get in there. Yeah. Certain passes. Um, so they have to have lead time. And you can go through the race teams, but usually it's a sponsor and it's a limited amount of people. Yeah. And NASCAR has to approve it. Yeah. That's cool. Let's um, give away um, a couple of hats tonight. Okay. So uh, let's uh, have hashtag... Stewart House Racing. All right. Let's see yeah. if y'all... See who's still on here, and I want to see some comments on here. Stewart yeah. House Racing. Stewart House Racing. Hashtag Stewart House Racing for some free swag. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We'll you. get you hooked up. Miss yeah. Melissa's going to be picking some names, so hopefully y'all were commenting. Yeah. Yeah. So get on there. and We got a big show coming up. You you guys were the pregame. Pre-show. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. We got the big show after this. We got our commander-in-chief going to step up and... Uh, Give us his uh, his uh, address the nation deal here the the state of the union nothing more fitting this baby right I know here. right this, this right old, here uh, it's the old Pocono trophy the winner from Pocono nice um, it's a pretty cool trophy but like I said this uh, this the the flag and the and the eagle eagle is that's is, awesome that's that's what we're all about that's it baby. We're about our our troops that fight for us every day for oh, our freedom and absolutely and um, so I, this is probably one of my best trophies that I've gotten and uh, so I display it well. Oh, and, well, I love it, man. But it's, it's, yeah, everybody needs to tune in tonight and watch my boy talk. Yep, yep, yep. You got to get on there and see what's going on. Trump train's coming through tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get your beer. Hold my yeah. beer. Okay. Be ready to roll. All right, you ready? Uh, Chuck Fox. Chuck Fox. Uh, Dean Christman. Dean Christman. Monty Detro. Monty Detro. Jacob Blitz. Jacob Blitz is billets or blitz? Uh, billets maybe. Mm -hmm. Jacob Billets and Jim Jim Fallman. Jim Fallman. Yep, all them. All you guys go to Fisher's Off Road or 
I mean, Tyler's not here, so I got to represent www.fishersoffroad.com. Go to the contact page, send us in your info, and tell us that you won tonight on Live Talk Tuesday, and we will get a, a I guess we're getting, what are we, hats, shirts? What do we get? Uh, we'll get them something. So give us your shirt size just in case, because we got some new Live Talk shirts that we're giving away, yes. so, you know, we'll get you a shirt or something. So give us your shirt size and all that good stuff and we'll get it out to you so we don't know what you're going to get no guarantees i mean <laughs> you're going to get something awesome though i can tell you that i think we're about done yeah yeah great show tonight yeah. all right well thanks a lot for joining yeah, me brother. thank you appreciate yes, it sir. i yep. appreciate your time it's always a pleasure no, man. It, you guys are like family to us and um Same like i said everybody Sometimes. out there you guys just go out and ride man it's it's so much fun and Hopefully, uh, I'll get out there and see a bunch of you people on the trail and get to meet some new friends. But Absolutely. side to side is, is is the way to go, man. It's a, it's a family thing. And uh, go camping and go riding. That's it. All right, guys. We'll see you. Stay tuned. The Commander-in-Chief is up next. Peace. Have a good one.